Hi, my name is Chris Hawker. I'm the co-founder of Carbon Fire. I'm here to introduce you to your new Carbon Fire. So please watch this entire video before you go out and try to use it in order to maximize the amount of fun that you have. So let's take a look inside the box. So in the box, we have the Carbon Fire itself and the bag with a couple of components. In the bag, we've got a stand and the USB cable. Stand goes together very easily. Looking at the plane itself, it comes with an installed battery and a memory card, which is right here. SD memory card, micro SD. Then it stays in the stand just like this. Ta-da! So the USB cord is used to both charge the plane and to get video off. The USB connector is right on the side where the LED is. And then once it's plugged in, you can use this, like I said, to charge it using a USB outlet on your laptop or a phone charger, for example. Or you can plug it into your laptop in order to get video off of it. So where do you want to have fun with your carbon fire? In a large grassy field. Not a parking lot, not a city street. You need a big, wide open space free of obstacles like trees and buildings. The number one enemy of the carbon fire is getting lost high up in a tree or on a roof. You really want to take the time to find an ideal location and also avoid pedestrians and bikers and cars because you don't want to scare people or injure anyone's property. You also want to make sure that you have great wind conditions, which means low wind. The plane only weighs 60 grams, and while the motors are powerful, they're not powerful enough to overcome a big wind given how light the plane is. Zero to five mile an hour gusts are fine over that, and it's, the wind could knock the plane out of the sky, and it'll make it a lot less fun to play. Ideal scene is important to in having a positive, fun experience with the carbon fire, so make sure you have the right place and the right weather. So once you're ready to play with your carbon fire, obviously, you'll need to hook it up to the app. So the way you do that is first you turn it on. The switch is on the side with the LED window. So you'll turn it on, you'll see the green LED glow solid for a second, and then you'll find your app on your phone, which is available on the App Store. And then you turn it on, and it'll hook up with the plane if the plane is on. If the plane's not on, it'll just stay searching for a little bit, and you won't be able to go into the app. For this next part, we're going to talk about how to actually fly and launch the Carbon Flyer. And for this, I'm bringing in Brett Gould, who's my co-founder and chief designer of the Carbon Flyer. Thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, the, really, the first thing you want to do with your Carbon Flyer when you go out to fly it is understand how to launch it. There's a right way and a few wrong ways to launch the plane. You always want to figure out, first of all, which direction the wind is coming from. So in this instance, our wind is coming from this direction, and you want to fly into the wind at launch to give the best chance of gaining altitude and stabilizing the plane. Uh, you're going to take your plane all the way up to 100% power. And so at 100% power, you're going to throw the plane um, not too hard, but kind of the motion that you, like a dart, like you're throwing a dart at a dartboard. You're going up and releasing your thumb and forefinger from about the midpoint of the plane simultaneously. What you want to avoid is rotating your wrist or, or uh, flicking your wrist when you th uh, throw the plane because this will cause it to destabilize and roll and crash. Again, the correct uh, technique for tossing a plane, 100% power, and that's it. We recommend that you practice launching the plane a few times without power in order to perfect your toss technique. If you have a friend with you, you can play catch. The maximum range on the Carbon Flyer Bluetooth is about 70 to 80 yards, so you want to execute maneuvers that help keep it around you. Circles and figure eights are one of the best ways to keep the Carbon Flyer inside that range. To make sure you get the most out of your time and you really enjoy the Carbon Flyer, take some extra batteries to the field with you. It takes 40 minutes maybe to fully charge one so you'll get seven to eight minutes of flight for each battery. As the battery runs down, you'll notice the carbon flyer will fly a little slower and a little lower. And you'll also see the indicator on the app indicate that the battery level is going lower. If the carbon flyer flies out of range, the motors stop. The nice thing about the carbon flyer is it has an automatic glide path that is almost like a parachute. It'll glide forward and slow, gradually coming down so you don't have to worry about you know, it crashing somewhere.
One of the great things about this product, given that it is app enabled, is that we can update the app and create new features and improve the control. Once we get feedback from our users, we'll be working on coming up with more features and refining the control as time goes on. So let me take you into the app now. First, we're gonna open our app. It's searching, then it connects. You're gonna test out your motors. And we'll go over a couple of screens. So to the left, you have trim, flight stunt mode, and flight mode. The trim is very important. In the first flights, you're gonna notice your plane might be difficult to turn to the left or to the right. So for instance, you're flying your plane and you notice it doesn't turn to the right as easy as it does to the left. You're gonna add a little bit of right trim by tapping the R and that's gonna help equalize variations in construction and uh, sourcing of motors that comes from the factory. So some perform a little bit differently and this will correct the issues with your trim left and right. The next is your stunt uh, mode, flight stunt, and this is gonna be the one push button barrel roll. It's gonna to roll to the right or to the left based on your preset here. And finally, you have your flight mode, which easy is gonna make more gradual turns advanced, tighter turns yet, and in expert mode, you're gonna turn your tightest turns, and you need to improve your skills to some degree in order not to crash in this expert mode. So let's go over the camera. In the top left corner of the screen, you have a camera icon. If you touch it, there'll be a countdown. After about seven seconds, it will turn red. This indicates you are actively recording you will automatically get a 90 second recording, at which time the camera will automatically shut off and file the recording onto the SD card. If you, for one, some reason or other, want to abort the camera mode, you can touch it again and it will shut down the camera. So typically you're going to launch the plane with your primary hand. So if you're right-handed, you're gonna launch with your right hand. Um, that means you're gonna be throttling up with your left hand for that launch. As soon as the plane is in the air, most people find it comfortable to switch hands and throughout the remainder of the flight, use your primary hand to control the phone one-handed. So now I'm gonna go over a few care and maintenance items on the carbon flyer. One of the things that can damage the carbon flyer, for instance, is uneven surfaces, like the corners of buildings or chain link fence, for instance. Uh, anything that allows the tip of the carbon flyer to get past a surface, and then maybe you have a, a, a wire of chain link fence impact on the edge of the carbon fiber. If you have a crack or a chip anywhere on the carbon fiber, simple CA or super glue is what you would use to fix that, and that should make a 100% uh, repair. So you would put just a drop inside the crack, and it will wick into the fibers, and make a 100% repair on the crack. If somehow you manage to damage a prop and you can order replacement props online, uh, how you would replace those is you grab the gear and you rotate backwards. So the threads are reversed on the drive shafts. So here you simply rotate your propeller off. You take your replacement propeller, you place it on the shaft, and then uh, you can rotate the propeller backwards Again, as if you're loosening it, which actually tightens it, and there you have it. Okay, let's go over the nose of the plane. So, the nose is incredibly durable. It's a very strong ABS plastic that's designed to absorb impacts and cause the shock to transfer through the fuselage of the, of the carbon fiber of the plane. However, you can get this dirty or muddy if you crash into the ground, and some of the planes can come equipped with a camera. So how you would clean that is basically just some glass cleaner, you spray a little bit on there, and wipe off the dirt with a clean cloth. Also with the wings, again, if you get a little mud splashed on them, dirt, you can just spray a little glass cleaner on the carbon fiber and wipe it off with a clean cloth. <laughs>